Better is relative. When the writer of Hebrews says, we are convinced of better things concerning you, brothers and sisters, he is writing to a tired church under persecution, dealing with oppression, and it's not about to get better. It's about to get worse. Nero hasn't even started his tyrannical games and maniacal persecution of the Christian church in Rome, and yet this very eloquent, experienced preacher writes them a letter saying, I am convinced it's going to get better. That's kind of hard to hear when your situation keeps getting worse. You ever had somebody tell you something that was meant to make you feel better, but it actually had the opposite effect? Because when your life keeps getting worse, the last thing you want to hear is, it's going to get better. And yet the consistent message of this particular letter from the writer of Hebrews is better. That Jesus Christ is better than worldly pleasures. That Jesus Christ is better than religious systems. That Jesus Christ is better than Moses, who was the leader that Israel knew and revered. That Jesus Christ is better. He uses that word better 13 times in the 13 chapters of the book of Hebrews. The Greek word sounds a lot like what you put on a salad, but it's kriton. Kriton. It's used to describe the covenant that we have because of the blood that Jesus shed for us. He says that the blood of bulls and goats or sacrifice can only make things better for a little while, and then you have to do it again. But he says that Jesus is a better high priest. Kriton. He's better. Jesus is better because he has a better nature. He has a better ministry. It says that because his blood speaks a better word, that we never have to believe the voice of accusation in our life. No matter how bad it is what you did, the blood of Jesus speaks a better word, Kriton, because he's better than that. And even though sometimes you feel like you should have done better, his blood was better than the worst thing that you did. So whatever his blood needs to cover in your life today, you can have confidence to enter the most holy place. I am preaching in my introduction like I'm on fire with the word of God. It's a better covenant. It is a better promise. He says it is a better hope. Kriton, better is like an anchor for your soul. It's a better hope because even when it hits the bottom, it grips on and it won't let you drift. It's a better hope. Some people have a surface level hope. And as long as things are floating along in their lives and everything is moving in the direction of their intention and their aspiration, they have great faith. But the writer says that we have a Kriton, better hope. Somebody say better. See, I know they made a movie called Hope Floats, but my hope is better than that. My hope doesn't even kick in till it gets to the bottom. So for everybody who has hit bottom in your emotions this week, or bottom in your bank account, or bottom in your body and your physical health, I want you to know there is a hope that is better than the passing pleasures or fleeting aspirations of this world. And he says, I'm convinced of better things concerning you. Isn't it wonderful to have somebody believe in you when you don't believe in yourself? Have you ever had somebody just see something in you that you quit believing a long time ago? It's a matter of trying to discern in my life what purpose God has made me for. And if I don't do that, I will always compare myself to the wrong standards in my quest to be better. So now I'm trying to bear fruit that belongs on somebody else's tree. But better is relative. And for all of us who are constantly trying to improve ourselves, and we read and we study and we try and we attend church at the 1130 at Elevation Valentine, which means you have to fight traffic to go into the parking lot. But I came here because I want to be better. Here's what I need you to know. Better is relative. Better needs a point of reference in order to be judged. But with the things that are really important, with the things that really matter, I wonder sometimes do we confuse what feels better with what is better? (laughs) 
when my dad went in for surgery, when they did his liver transplant, he felt better before he went into surgery than he did after they cut him open. But he had a new liver. But the human body goes through something called a rejection period when something new is introduced. The challenge with the church in Rome is that they're walking in a new covenant, but the old one feels better. The challenge for some of us as God is moving in our life is that we are in a rejection period where we are trying to assimilate new truth into an old life and an old mindset. The temptation is to go back to bad because sometimes bad feels better. Can I be honest with you? I see a lot of people who go back to bad relationships because sometimes bad feels better. It's true. Sometimes we go back to bad patterns of thinking because they are more familiar than new ways of faith and opportunities that doors open. Sometimes we go back to something bad and we go backwards because what is new is not working at first. Most of the things that grace will introduce into your life for the operating system called faith will feel worse at first. And yet the writer of Hebrews says to you and to me and to this beloved church of precious people who are striving to follow the ways of Christ and yet their life is getting worse. He says, don't go back. What you have now is better. Yeah, but if it's better, then why is my situation getting worse? But if it's better, why do I keep struggling with this? It's an interesting thing about sin. Until you resist it, you don't know how strong it really is. When you first start resisting a sin, and let's don't call out one that church people love to talk about. Let's do one that doesn't usually make the list. Self-pity. Y'all thought I was going to say smoking and you were going to be fine because you quit 12 years ago. No, I'm coming for the real one. Self-pity feels better than owning and becoming accountable for the things God is doing in your life. So now let's say God is delivering you from, from self-pity and then you know, you feel yourself pulled back to self-pity. Don't be surprised when you go back to the old way. Don't be surprised. It's not because you're not a new creation. It's just because sometimes backwards feels better. When you've been doing something wrong for long enough, the right way feels awkward. Yo, I wanted a hobby, so I went to play uh, tennis. Holly started taking tennis lessons, and I was like, well, I mean, I like the way you look in the uniform, so I'll come out there with you. <laughs> Amen. I like the scenery. Amen. I'm allowed to. That's my wife. <laughs> so when I showed up for the lesson, Robert said to me, before we even got started hitting the ball, first ball, and see, so you need to know, I have a style of tennis that I had developed that was independent of professional instruction or expert input. And it kind of worked for me as long as the person on the other side of the net had never played tennis before. I could get it over the net. And the first thing he said to me was, show me your serve. I need to see what I'm working with. Show me your serve. So I was like, okay. I grabbed the racket. And the way I would control the racket was with my index finger. And I would think the ball over the net and it would usually go in. I'm telling you, it would, it would go in uh, six miles an hour. It was slow. But if the person on the other side never played before, they couldn't hit it back. And I put it over the net. And I showed him my serve. And it went in. And he said, all right. Now I see what I'm working with. Let's fix your grip. He showed me I was holding the racket the whole wrong way. A completely different way than it's meant to be held. So he showed me how I'm supposed to hold the racket. The next 50 balls that I tried to hit over the net either went over the fence, <laughs> into the net, or somewhere far outside the box. I was complaining because I thought, I came out here to pay you so you could make me do better. 
How many know that sometimes in order to get better, first you have to go backwards? This is so important, man. I got out the bed this morning to tell you this. I studied to tell you this. Sometimes in your life, you will feel as if you're going backwards. And the temptation will be to revert back to something that worked. I tried to turn the other cheek, and then they hit that one too. And now I'm going to do what I know how to do. I tried to be generous. I tried to surrender control. I tried to stop manipulating people. I tried to be still and know that he was God. It didn't work. But God said this is a season where he is fixing your grip. You see, all of your life, you've been doing it a certain way. And it worked for a little while. But you've entered into grace now. This is a better way. This is a better covenant. This is a better high priest. This is a better approach. This is a better resurrection. Somebody shout better. better. But it doesn't feel better. And the temptation is always to go back. To go back when you feel like it's not getting any better. I mean, I used to have friends and then I joined this church and my friends kicked me out of the synagogue. Imagine what it would have been like to be a new Christian in the Roman Empire. The religion that you came from won't accept you. The empire that you're a part of doesn't recognize you and actually wants to eliminate you. Imagine what it would have been like. And here's the writer of Hebrews saying, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. He must have a different, different definition of better than what I see on Instagram. He must have a different definition of better than just a situation improving. I wonder what is your different definition of better. I wonder what is your standard. Better is relative. Oh, well, I'm not one of those good Christians. There's only one good Christian. It's the one with the name Christ in the chin. He put the Christ. The rest of us are just following one failure at a time. They don't like me over here. I'm going to see what's going on on the West Wing. You hear me? Oh, well, they're a better Christian than me. They memorized all this scripture. No, they're a better memorizer. That doesn't make them a better Christian. Sometimes we get better backwards. Well, well, if I, if I was more famous, yeah, it'd be better. We, we all have some idea. It's, 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 like, it's like something that we think will be so much better. Life will be so much better. If, if I had more followers, if I had more, if I had more, it'd be better. Really? Would it really be better? You ever, you ever met a miserable rich person? I can introduce you to a few. They are more miserable than a person who is miserable and wants to get rich. Because while you're trying to get rich, you get to tell yourself that if I get rich, it'll get better. But then when you get money and you still feel miserable, because better is not a byproduct of external circumstances improving, it is a product of what you Sometimes it gets better, sometimes it doesn't, and you do. This is the word, LJ. I don't need any organ. I'm preaching so good. I don't need anything behind this message. Somebody shout better. Better. And it's so difficult for us to believe that it's getting better when it feels worse. It's so difficult for me to believe that it's getting better because I am comparing my real life to somebody else's fake life. See, the reason you feel like everybody is happier than you is because you're not seeing the parts that they choose to hide from you. You are only seeing the version of them that they want to broadcast. So when you really understand that better is relative, you can understand as a parent that there is nobody better equipped to raise that child than you. Yeah, but I got a temper. Well, they needed a strong hand then. Just don't kill them and we'll be all right. Amen. Amen. There's nobody better because better is relative. So if you walk into Krispy Kreme, it's better than broccoli. 
unless you need to lose 30. If the purpose of the food is nutrition, give me the broccoli. If the purpose of the food is to make my taste buds dance and shout the hallelujah chorus, I want the Krispy Kreme donut. Better is relative. I walked into Guitar Center. I was trying to buy some software for my son to make his beats. And I asked Jamie, who I've known for years, which one is better. You know, he said, get ready to shout over this. He said, depends on what you want to use it for. I got happy because that spoke to all my insecurities. It depends on the purpose, which one is better. For what God intended you to do, you're perfect for it. There's nobody better to do it. There's nobody more qualified to do it. There's nobody who can do what you do when God puts you where he puts you and you give him what you got. I'm better. Woo! I'm like the Clemson Tigers. I'm better. I'm like Adidas over Nike. I'm better. I'm going to stop with this, but I want to speak to somebody who's been telling yourself that somebody could do it better than you, that there's somebody more fit than you, that there's somebody who's got more knowledge than you. Sometimes God needs somebody who is lesser so he can show that he's better. On what basis is my confidence that it's going to get better? All the way back to Hebrews chapter 1, where he takes them all the way back. You know, sometimes you got to go back to get better. If some of us compared our lives right now to where we should be, I mean, you have no idea. Touch somebody say, you have no idea what's in my bloodline. So the fact that I'm even in church... Come on, shout, angels. The fact that I'm even in church, shout about it. The fact that I'm holding a pen and writing down notes off of a Bible scripture. Come on, the fact that I've got my hands lifted right now. I, I'm, I'm convinced he has been better to me than I even know how to be to myself. So when I think about how far I have to go, it makes me want to quit. But when I think about how far he's brought me, come on, I'm so much better than I was. I'm so much wiser than I was. I'm so much stronger than they said I would be. Cry Tom. You got to go back to understand better. When's the last time you considered your testimony? When's the last time that you considered how much God has taught you? When's the last time you rejoiced? When's the last time that you thank God for what's right in front of your face rather than looking so far out for something that would be better? What could be better than his presence? What could be better than peace with God? What could be better to be known by the one who knows you completely and yet loves you entirely? What could be better? I only came out to preach the 1130 because Graham was out here. That's my 11-year-old. I like to chill on the front row with him during worship. The way I preach this at 930 is the one I want to put online. I never can decide when they ask me, Saturday night, 930, 1130, which one was better? I don't really know how to tell. I can't really pick because better is relative. Better is subjective. One girl told me this week something I said seven years ago at a 930 service. She said it changed her life. She said they didn't even put the 930 online. I went to look for it. It was the 1130. The 930 was better. Well, maybe to you it was better. You never know what's better. You never know what experiences are better. Sometimes you look back over the things that afflicted you, and you realize those are the very same things that developed you into the person that you are. Better is relative. I'd rather have a, a, a better sense of appreciation than a better car. I would. And if you have a better car, but you can't drive, I'd rather be 
with a better driver and a worse car. Come on. And I know you want to go back sometimes. I know you want to quit because depression is giving up on the belief that it could ever get better. That's what makes people end it all. That's why we need faith. That's why we can't let that go no matter what. That's why we continually have to tell ourselves it's already getting better. I'm cut open right now on the surgeon's table, but I'm getting better. And although it doesn't look better yet, God is doing some of the infrastructure work that is so important and I'm getting better. Come on. If that's your testimony, give God praise that he's making you better. And he said to the suffering saints in the Roman empire that long ago, this is Hebrews one verse one long ago at many times and in many ways, he's going all the way back to show them how much better it really is, how much better it is than they can recognize. He said, God used to speak through the prophets and that was good. But now in these last days, he has spoken through his son. What could be better than to know the incarnate son of God? Now, the reason that the people missed Jesus when he came is because they were looking for something better, but yet God snuck into Bethlehem looking like a baby in a manger. I got a question. Are you looking at better, but haven't recognized it yet? Has God allowed your eyes in this season to be right in front of something that your spirit has not yet ascertained? Some of us don't know how good we have it. And the reason I mentioned Graham is because I slipped him a piece of paper the other day and said, list five things that could make our life better. And he wrote back, this was three years ago. He said, they're about as good as they get. I said, thank God that my son recognizes what my experience has caused me to forget. Some of us need to go back to our first love. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but if you would go back, you would realize that God has made you so much better, that he has treated you so much better than your sins deserve. Christ's is better. It's, it's better. Mercy is better than sacrifice. You know what one writer said? He said, it's better to have a little crust with peace than a house full with strife. Some of you, I don't have much, but the crumb I have is better. I'm grateful for this piece. I'm grateful for this little bit. It's better. And he said he spoke through his son, and we missed him because we deemed him insignificant, just like we miss some of the best moments of our life because we're waiting on something better. He said he's spoken through his son. The word became flesh. That's Jesus. He is the heir of all things through whom he also created the world. Next verse. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. And after making purification for sins, he sat down. I don't have this memorized. I'm reading it off the screen at the right hand of majesty on high. The next verse tripped me up because I couldn't understand it. It said, having become as much Crichton, better, translated here, superior, as much better Crichton as the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. How many know his name is higher? How many know he has the name that is exalted above every name? How many know every name you can name has to bow to that name when I speak the name? And it says that the creator is better than what he created. Never worship the gift and forget the giver. He's better and their lives are getting worse. And maybe I can't understand why that as God is doing something deeper in me while my spirit is getting better. Why is my situation getting worse? And so I had to go back to understand what verse four says, because it doesn't just say that Jesus is better. Put it up real quick. It's got 
blow your mind. Can I show you this? You, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to show you because you look like you're hungry for the word of God. And when I was reading this out loud, I know my kids thought I was crazy. I was walking around the house preaching it, chest bumping the Holy Ghost, just running into nothing. Ooh, I was excited because it said he became. Did you see that? Having become. Now that 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 made me stop. How could he become better when he's already perfect? And in order to understand, not that he is better, I believe that. How many believe God is greater than any situation, any angel? Yeah, 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 yeah. How many believe that, that God is greater than you? I advise you to raise your hand real high, even if it's a pit stain or something. Raise it all the way up. Okay. He's better, right? But how did he become better? We read verse 3. So it can't be that his character was improved. He is the exact imprint of the image of God. You can't get any better than that. It says that he sustains the world by the power of his word. You can't get any stronger than that. So how did he, who was without blemish from the foundation of the world, become better? And it's right there in the verse. It doesn't say that he improved. Look at verse 3. It says that after he had made purification for sin, he sat down. He got better by coming lower. I don't know what's going on in your life today. It seems like it's going backwards. Kids getting crazier, bills getting more expensive. Everything in your life seems to be more and more out of control. Could it be that God is making you better by taking you lower? Here's what I read in my Bible that He will exalt the humble. That if I will humble myself, see, I don't understand how Jesus could become better. But the way he became better since he was already high and lifted up, it doesn't get any higher since he already inhabited eternity, since he couldn't be raised any higher. The Bible says that Jesus came lower. Watch this. Jesus went backwards so you could get better. Let's praise the name. Come on. Jump up if you know mercy is real. Let's praise the name of the one who stepped down out of heaven looking like a man who died on a cross and who is glorified forever. Somebody shout, I'm getting better. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.